Hi to our techie friends in Denmark and hello to everyone. This is our next tutorial in our series on web scrapping using Python. I'm Scrappy and this is World Web Scrapping. There we go! Hello to everyone and welcome to World Web Scrapping. This is our next tutorial. Here again we are going to talk about proxies, but this time we are going to talk about SAX proxies. In one of uh, the previous tutorials we talked about HTTP proxies and how to use those proxies with our request module and we create a function which uh, rotated multiple proxies for us so that makes it uh, more secure if you keep rotating our proxies with uh, every request so in this tutorial we are going to use SAX proxy so uh, let's get started so uh, SAX proxy is another kind of proxy so there are two kinds uh, of proxies one is empty HTTP proxy another is SAX proxy HTTP proxy we uh, talked about last time SAX proxies are better kind of proxies because and they uh, do the DNS certificate resolution on the client side instead of the proxy server so what that means is that they cannot see your data and if you are using HTTP server proxy there is a chance of uh, that they can see your data and that data can get leaked but uh, with the SUX proxy that cannot happen and uh, they are more secure than the HTTP proxies also the free SUX proxy are faster than the freely available HTTP proxies so that's another advantage of it so if you want to use a proxy so SUX proxies are the way to go even if you want to buy a pay version so they are also in using SAX proxy makes uh, more sense than uh, using HTTPs so we can use SAX proxy with a request model but we cannot directly use that we need to install a dependency pipe install the request SAX so we have uh, till now installed only request model so this is a third-party application and this is what we need to install so just uh, run the cell pipe install request SACS and, and this will integrate your request module with uh, the SACS and uh, you will be able to use the SACS proxies. So to use the SACS proxies I'm going to this website um, www.sax-proxies.net and I'm taking free SACS proxies from here and this website has a lot of uh, free SACS proxies so SACS have two protocols like there is SACS 4 and SACS 5 and so this site offering me SACS 4 so I'm going to use that. So when you define your proxies uh, you will have to tell which proxies it is it uh, sucks 4 or sucks 5 because the request model cannot identify these uh, between sucks 4 or sucks 5 itself so I will show you how to do that so first run the cell and it will install the dependency for SUX and I already installed so I will not run this cell again so like uh, when we did in our previous tutorial what we were doing we were sending HTTP proxies and we were writing HTTP and then our proxy and column port here we are sending SACS proxy so that's how we have to write here if we are sending HTTP proxy we have to sign HTTP if we are sending a SACS 5 proxy we are writing SACS 5 if uh, it is a SACS 4 you write here SACS 4 that's how we have to do so in this dictionary that uh, we will be passing with uh, our get request as a parameter we have to define which proxy it is so that's uh, what I'm doing here this is uh, my URL and I'm not going to run the cell again because and this proxy is not going to work so again I'm creating a dictionary same way we did in our previous tutorial and I'm assigning these uh, proxy socks 5 to this keys here then I'm sending a get request and uh, passing my URL and uh, assigning my proxies to the proxy dictionary that I have created here the same way that we used to do for headers and cookies it is just the same thing and then I'm printing the response so 
If the response is successful, it will show me that uh, which proxies uh, we are used. So let me run the cell. It is not going to work actually, but it is going to show an error. And I want to show what kind of uh, error you get when your proxy does not work. See, uh, when a proxy does not work, it takes uh, more time to connect to the, to the server because their request is going to fail. When the request is going to fail, it is uh, going to take more time than the successful request. Then uh, that's uh, what I have uh, felt like uh, what happens. So um, this is uh, what happens. Uh, your proxy does not work and uh, you are going to get this kind of error. Uh, max tries exceeded with the URL IP. So um, this is uh, what you are going to get. So this is not going to work. I knew that that already so again I'm importing my library request and beautiful soup then I'm going to this website and I'm going to scrap the all of that uh, proxy list and we are going to again iterate those proxies randomly as uh, we did for HTTP proxies and we are going to send multiple requests so let's run the cell it will go to um, this website and I'm creating a beautiful soup object here so we are going back to CSS selector. This time you will not be using XPath as uh, we did in our previous tutorial. Just to tell you like if you have uh, trouble with the, the previous tutorial, you can create this code in this way I'm showing you today. So send a get request and then I created my uh, iBeautifulSoup object, soup response dot content. So this gave me this HTML page then from here and then I'm creating again a set an empty set of proxies then I'm writing my for loop so what I'm saying if uh, I go to this proxy so my proxy list it is a table and my table comes in this div tag and there is uh, this class row and then that complete table we are going to extract them from there and then we are going to extract all that our table rows so that's uh, what we have to do so this comes under this uh, div and this comes under this uh, class row if we go further down we have to find where this table is actually and let's see that uh, where this table is so uh, this is uh, where our table is. So this is our table and we need to go to this table tag from there. We need to go to the table of body and we don't want the headers anyway. We just want the body. So we need to go to the table body from there. I need to go um, and extract every row. So that's uh, what I'm doing in this line of code here. So I'm writing a for loop and I'm saying for BS object dot find all find me the table and because it will give me a list so take the first index out of there then again do a find all and find me the table body and again take out the zero the first index from there then again do a find all and give me the all the table rows so we will get all the table rows like that then from those uh, table rows i need to find all the children we have done this all the children in one of our previous uh, tutorials because uh, once we have found uh, the table rows basically if uh, I go here and just do an inspect here if uh, I do find all the table rows uh, this is what I will find but from this table rows I need to find these uh, children these uh, all the TD tax table data that is uh, basically what is called so this all table TD tax are the children of uh, this uh, TR row so that's uh, what I'm writing there that uh, find me all the children so what it uh, will do it will give me a list of all uh, uh, of this uh, these children it will give me all of uh, these things into a list so that's uh, what I'm doing so I'm saying IP dot find children gave me all the children so that's uh, what I'm going to get then again write a for a loop because I want to extract the text out of that I don't want any of uh, the text related to that so for that I'm writing a for loop uh, that element dot text dot strap for element in this column so again I'm writing the same for loop into this and columns uh, that variable I created 
and I'm assigning it back to the same variable. So it should not be difficult. We have uh, done this in our previous tutorial and uh, we were scrapping table data from Wikipedia. We have uh, done the same in two of our tutorials and again the same thing that uh, we did in our last tutorial with HTTP proxy. I'm uh, joining them with uh, a column that's uh, what we need. So once uh, we have uh, got our columns data here, so let me run this and show you what happens here. I will print the columns uh, that I'm getting from this line of code and see what happens here. I get it into a list. From this list I need to extract this uh, first element and the second element. So this will be the zero index. That's uh, what I'm writing here dot join columns. From this columns variable this uh, list gives me the zero index and give me the first index and join them by a columns. So that's uh, what this next line of code will do. So this was just to show you. So I will just hash it out now. So this is uh, what I'm going to get. I'm going to get this uh, thing first, this IP address. Then I'm going to get the port and it will be joined with uh, the using the columns. Now, as I told you, I need to define what a protocol it is. It is a SUX4 or it is a SUX5. So since uh, if you see in the table, I'm getting SUX4 proxies from this website. So I I need to define that uh, these are SOX4 proxies, otherwise it will not work. So uh, that's why I'm again adding SOX4 column and double backslash in front of this proxy and I'm assigning it back to the proxy. Then I'm appending this uh, proxy back to this um, the empty set that I created. So as I run the cell I will get a set of proxies here which uh, will be having all the things that I need. So I got all of uh, these proxies now. There are several proxies I have got and all of uh, the proxies that are available in that table I have got all of them. And now again uh, this is in the same code that uh, we did in the last tutorial. We uh, don't need to change anything into that. We have got all the same code and uh, so again from ITER tools import cycle. Uh, this is uh, to randomly select the cycle method. This uh, ITER tools library is uh, going to help us in randomly select a proxy. So I'm creating a variable here proxy pool cycle and I'm passing my proxies uh, that set I created previously. and then URL, this URL and uh, going to test on this URL. I'm writing a for loop, I'm going to send 10 requests so for that reason I'm creating a for loop. I'm not sending all of them if uh, there are 100 proxies. I'm not sending 100 requests right now, it will take a lot of time. So I'm uh, again writing a variable proxy next proxy pool. So this is uh, what uh, going to give us a random proxy out of this proxy pool. So that's how we get a random proxy out of there. Then I'm printing a request ID, so request 1, request 2 like that. After that I'm again writing try and accept block because some of my proxies will not work and it should uh, not throw me error like this. If I don't write an accept block is going to show me an error like this which uh, I really don't want to see and it will break my program. Um, I don't want that. So that's uh, what I'm doing. I'm writing try accept block in try block. I'm putting my get statement. I'm passing my URL. I'm passing my proxies dictionary here. So in this dictionary when this proxy is assigned from here it will be assigned here also. So that's how it is uh, going to work. And I'm printing my response and if uh, my request fails. I'm just saying that uh, print um, skipping connection error that proxy not work and just skip it and uh, move back to the proxy. So let's uh, run this. It is going to take some time but uh, should be faster than HTTP proxy that's uh, what I'm expecting. But if uh, my first request is going to fail it is always uh, going to take more time whenever I have a successful request with um, these proxies. It shows me faster that's uh, what happens. So my first request fails as usual because uh, this proxy they keep on expiring. So we cannot do a lot about that. My second request is again going to fail. It seems um, that because it's uh, taking again time. So let me pause for a second here and I will show you when I get the results.
So this is, uh, you see here, uh, my third request was successful and my code is still running. So when I have a successful request, is the code run and the request gets successful faster. And if uh, the request is going to fail, it takes a lot of time. But still, the SOX request proxies are a lot faster than the HTTP proxy, so you can use SOX proxies. So if you want to find uh, these free proxies again, go on Google and search for free proxies. And if you want to use a paid service, that also you can go through Google search and find some websites that gives you paid proxies. And um, let me just run this code and there are two more request pendings. So if you see these two out of uh, my seven requests till now, five have uh, failed. And if uh, I have two successful requests, these are the successful proxies. Let's see if we see these proxies in our list here. And um, so this uh, was the successful proxies that works for us. And um, there is a long list and this was the other successful that was for us. So again, one of my proxies was successful and my ninth request was again failed. So that's uh, what happens. So you can use if you need to use free proxies only you use uh, this code and this code uh, file directly and you can get the proxies and uh, use uh, just this copy paste and this code into your code file and use uh, these proxies directly. So that is all for today my Techie friends. If you like the video please like and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video tutorial and do not stop visiting our website. Leave your comments below and ask me any question you have. I will be happy to answer them. Link is given in the description of this video to get code and full material. Stay happy, stay safe, stay Techie.